Binding vows are one of the most complicated things in Jujutsu Kaisen's power system. The core principle of binding vows are basically an equivalent exchange, a pact between two parties over something. There are three kinds of binding vows we have seen in the series, and I will present them in the order of how they're probably created or discovered. Natural binding vows, or officially known as heavenly restrictions, is merely a binding vow in which fate bestows its boons and banes without any consent from the person. They're born with it. It can either be a weak body for more cursed energy and output, or just giving them superhuman physiques for disabling their cursed energy usage. Others could exist. Even normal curse techniques as well. Heck, people like Higuruma and Hakari could have domains as their primary skill set in exchange of not having a typical curse technique like other characters. There is no way to control their existence or appearance. You just have to deal with it. These are natural, and probably what inspired the man-made ones, created by sorcerers for themselves, the most likely earlier ones being self-imposed binding vows. The most commonly used binding vows. You give something away in exchange for another. And apparently, the process can be reversible and its consequences minimal. There's two types of these. The ones you pay the price before using it and the ones you pay the price after. Mua, for example, sacrificed her whole future never to use a sword again. If she ever does try, she might even lose her hands entirely for the binding vow to maintain itself, or a psychological imposition that she will never swing it no matter how much she tries. The other is here. Sukuna has imposed several banes to maximize his boons. Bane 1. Sukuna cannot use furnace without using cleave and dismantle first. Bane 2. Sukuna can only use furnace on one target only outside his domain. Bane 3. Sukuna's malevolent shrine allowed living things to freely enter and exit his domain. In exchange, the boons he received were, Sukuna's furnace has increased output and lethality due to imposed restrictions of cleave and dismantle being necessary first. Boon 2. Furnace has far more increased speed, range and output outside his domain for just one target as well as inside the domain to more effectively target multiple targets. Boon 3. The barriers can now be conditioned to keep all non-living things from leaving the domain, effectively and efficiently. This system gives Sukuna the following advantage. By sealing off non-living things, the flames of furnace will not be able to escape outside the barrier, which means that it will create a buildup akin to Onoki's dust release from Naruto, turning all within it into nothing. Yuji was very lucky Sukuna's domain lasted only 99 seconds, or he'd be dead. The last one is binding vows made with others. These ones are just agreements between two people that might not necessarily be fair at all, but they're vows that are binding. In what way was Sukuna's binding vow helpful to Yuji? But it was made effective when Yuji foolishly agreed to the bet of fighting Sukuna to legalize it. That said, even Sukuna was careful around it, and so was the lunatic Kenjaku. Implying the consequences are very dire.